What is up ladies and gentlemen, we're back here for yet another banger video and in today's video, as you guys can tell by the title and the thumbnail, we're going to be going over spinnerbaits using your trailer hooks and when to use them and like why you should be using them in certain situations, alrighty? So if you guys don't know what a trailer hook is, pretty much it is this little guy right here and you get your spinner bait and normally it will turn out to look something like this where you've got your spinner bait you've got your hook and then it is attached free swinging down here this is a, a, a strike king spinner bait that i believe all the strike king spinner baits come with trailer hooks but if you have just a standard spinner bait such as this one you go you can take it and uh, this is a VMC trailer hook, trailer hook right here. And uh, they're, they're fairly cheap. They're a couple bucks for like five. And uh, they have this, there, there's different variations obviously with, with each brand, but they'll normally have some sort of little plastic coating right there, right on top right there, as you guys could tell over the eyelet. And that is because the eyelet of, the, of this hook can fit over this hook, over this hook, and I like, if that little piece of rubber wasn't there, then the hook would probably fall off. So, pretty much all you do is you just get your thing, you put it in there, and then there is your trailer hook right there. And obviously this one, this one had never been on a, on a spinner bait before, so it's, it is gonna stick out and be more stiff, but once, once you use them a while, they're gonna be free swinging a, a little bit, and, all that stuff. So that that is a spinner bait with a trailer hook. So first of all, the situations. That's that's what we're gonna kind of start off talking about. The situations and why, where and when and that kind of thing would you even want to be using a spinner bait? And so the first thing is just when you have found a school bass. You know, so you're you're fishing, you found a school bass, and uh, and they're feeding on bait fish and you just want to make sure that you don't have any short strikes and if you don't know what a short strike is it's pretty much when you have a spinner bait right here and uh... and they come up and they just kind of swipe at it and they don't get a hook and so but this time your hook is extended out another inch or so another inch to maybe an inch and, and an inch and a half wow that was kind of hard to say um, and so you don't get, you eliminate a lot of those short strikes. So that is pretty much like just situation number one. Um, situation number two is when they are feeding heavily on bait fish and shad in particular. Um, if you're over in Texas, they have a lot of gizzard shad and so it's just like a shad. Um, it's a little bit different, but um, the, these things, cause shad, they run in groups and you'll get a lot of short strikes then and so just whenever they're feeding on shad is when you should be throwing a spinner bait and then you'll also get a lot of short strikes so um, the next thing is just like freaking if you want to throw a trailer hook so that's that's not really a point but if you want to throw one just throw one you know um, places where I don't really throw one I don't I'll throw them sometimes but I don't throw them a lot around uh, bushes and tree laydowns and that kind of thing and logs because that increases your chance of getting hung up pretty much um, that's like another hook and it's also another inch out there so you could also increase your chances of hooking a tree but then you could also increase your chances of hooking up so uh, hooking up with a fish so it you just kind of have to weigh the high the pros and cons I guess you could say so um, and then the main thing that I really want to get at is like when and why you why you should really use a trail hook and what what I, I like to picture fish a lot of times as uh, as humans or um, because it, we actually do have a lot of characteristics and their attitude can uh, be very similar to ours in, in my brain obviously in my brain um, so when you're when you're dealing with shad, shad, like I said earlier, they love to uh, to school up and they love to be in groups and packs 
and that kind of thing. And so what a spinnerbait is trying to do, you'll see a spinnerbait, actually I'm gonna get this one right here, okay? Because this is a prime example. It has some color on the blades too. And so when you're, when you're looking at a spinnerbait, you, you see these blades right here, and then you've got the big skirt, okay? And so this, a spinnerbait, is trying to imitate a small pod or a small group um, or a few shad, pretty much. So what, what you gotta look at is you gotta look at the blades, and, okay? And so you say, this is a shad, this is a shad right here, and then the skirt whole thing right there, that might be one bigger shad or it could be two smaller shad. It doesn't really matter, you know? It's a group of shad. That's what that's what the bass are seeing, okay? And so what, what they do a lot of times and, uh, is a bass will be following them and then they'll, like the bass will just open it up its mouth and just zoom at the group of bait fish and they'll just try to swipe at them. And maybe, just maybe, they'll get one or even a couple of the shad. They're probably not gonna get all of them. So that's one reason why you throw a trailer hook is because it might, they might be going for this blade right here. And although there's not a blade right there, this, this trailer hook reaches farther back here. So if a bass just comes up and eats this one, we'll hold this hook back up here. If a bass just comes up and eats this one, they're not trying to go for this hook. But if this hook is farther on down, they come up and they swipe at it, they can also get this hook right there. So it, it does increase your chances of hooking up with a fish. Um, also, like I said, if you're throwing it around brush and everything, I normally stick to like a spinnerbait with no trailer hook on there. Um, but if, if it's fall time, um, which is when I throw a lot of spinnerbaits because the, spin, the shad are a little bit bigger, because the shad spawn is in like spring, right when the bass are spawning. Um, so they're a little bit bigger and it's a prime uh, shad or a prime uh, forage of food for a bass uh, right before the winter. So they can get some, get some good food before they go and rest for the next like three months, you know? So um, that, that's kind of my outlook on spinner baits and why you should throw uh, trailer hooks. Um, like I said, this is trying to imitate a group of shad, and like I said, shad a lot of time run in groups, and so that's what bass will come up, think there's a group of shad, they'll come up, swipe at it, maybe they'll injure one of them, um, and maybe they'll even get, get one in their mouth, you know? And then, um, and so that's why you throw, that's why I throw a lot of, uh, uh, trailer hooks. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you all were able to uh, to take something away from this. I actually tried to make this a little bit shorter video, but it doesn't look like it. it's like eight minutes and 30 seconds so far. So anyways, guys, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and uh, make sure to subscribe. Make sure to go check out Fly South Apparel. Also, I'm going to have a huge 1,500 subscriber giveaway coming for you guys here very soon. I'm still waiting on a couple of products. And uh, other than that, thank you guys for watching. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next episode of LMB Nation. Peace, guys.